about your piece, Stephen? The piece I'm working on is it's based on the old library up in the town. And again, with, it's the same stone that we're working on as was there. Um, it's a quality building. It's designed by William Dean Butler, who he also designed uh, Connolly Station in Dublin. But mm -hmm. it's, a, it's just a really elegant building. And it's just in my, my intention is to sort of refresh it. And what I've done is taken the in the archways. You'll see at the top you have a keystone. Okay. And the keystone has this lovely S-shaped corbel. And what I've done is basically carved the negative of it. So if I was to take this piece, it would fit over almost like a mold. And in a way, for me, it's always about that building and just to somehow refresh it. And I'd love to maybe lay it out in, in, in the bottom and sort of connect the, the two pieces. Is that what you're hoping to do with it when it's finished? Yeah, well, we're going to send them up for exhibition next week and um, we, we'll see where they go from there. You okay, know. But, uh, it's just, it means people can... Uh, you, you, it's just great because there's so much good stuff in Clonus mm -hmm. and you get to really look at it. And, you know, you get so used to stuff and you live by it all the time and you don't notice it, but it's just lovely. So for me... My background is architectural carving and to go and you know take that and sort of bring it back to life a little that's the intention. And how difficult is it to really actually carve it? Um, it's alright. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not too hard for you if you have a background no. in architecture. Uh, the, the stone is, is something, obviously suppose we've got kind of hard stone and soft stone, we, we got, this block ended up pretty hard so we've just, um, it's mostly had to be ground out but it's you know anyway for me it's, 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 it's more the main form is in it. Okay. And that's that's fine by me at the moment for uh, over the course of the week or so. And you've lovely weather this week uh, for working outside. So weather, yeah, <laughs> you were, you'd normally complain about the, the cold and complain about the heat now, but uh, yeah. no, it's been brilliant. Would you normally work outside like this? Or? Yeah, I kind of like working outside as much as I can, but, um, but it's not usually like this. So yeah, that's it. Great. You're in Ireland. Uh. Yeah. So Mark, you're a local folk, aren't you? Yeah, I'm from uh, Emmy Vale, um, so I'm on the. I was part of the team that organised this on behalf of Mon County Council. So, um, so uh, yeah, we all found ourselves here in Clonus for the week sculpting. Okay. Sandstone. How many sculptors are here? There's six in total. Um, we try to invite a diverse group of sculptors who uh, each work in different areas of stone sculpture and stone carving. So uh, we were able to fill that requirement. They all brought you know something different to to the week. You know. Um, so it's great to have that variety for the public to see uh, different examples of stone working going on, you know. Okay, and how on earth did you get involved in well, stone sculpture? <laughs> I suppose when I was younger I did an interest in wood carving in my teens and uh, it really developed just into an interest in trying stone and then even into different mediums like bronze and polystyrene. So I use a vast range of mediums now but it's just an interest in sculpting really. Um, it's from a, from a young age really. That's okay, and tell us a little bit about what you're working on here. Well, <coughs> with doing research on local themes and history, I discovered the, the beautiful item in the National Museum of Ireland, the uh, Clonus Gold Dress Fastener, which is one of the finest examples they have in the museum. So I wanted to replicate it here, so I went to the museum and got private access to the piece and um, was able to study its dimensions. So I scaled it up here to two and a half times to the original size. So I also when I studied it, I felt that the form of it maybe was fit into the area and that you had two maybe communities and you had the bridge in between which would represent the, the different cultures here with the north border and ourselves in the south here. So um, I always see it as a, maybe a symbol of peace as well. Okay. And is this the only piece you've created this week for the symposium or are there other pieces on display? There's pieces on display up in the old library here in the Diamond and Clonus as well. We each uh, put two pieces in for the week to show people what we a finished piece turns out like. So the um, public had a great opportunity to, to see that as well, you know. Um, things that we've worked on through the years and it, it was fairly successful now for us. Okay. And how long on average does it kind of take to create a piece? Well, on Monday morning basically this was a, a boulder, it was this height and it was over to here and here so this is uh, five days on so it, was, it takes its time but there's an awful lot of cutting and the stone is fairly hard so you know you really need to allow a week or two to finish a piece off properly. You know, to It's quite intricate isn't it? It is yeah you have to be careful where you know just be pretty sure where you're making your cuts and you okay. <laughs> no mistakes. So you've been doing this obviously for quite a while, is there a piece that you're particularly proud of? Um, I, I've done some public sculpture, a, a piece in, in Emmy Vale, uh, a limestone sculpture outside a primary school, Corcoran, and um, it's 
was a really successful piece for me and I was delighted with how it finished so I suppose it stands stands out as me finest piece in, in my own mind you know. Okay and for people who maybe would like to get involved in kind of stone sculpture is there kind of a route to go down to do that? Uh, th there's different routes I suppose uh, you can study, you can go to art college um, maybe not so much they won't teach maybe the traditional methods but uh, you can go do a City and Guilds course in London and you will learn all the traditional styles of stone carving so there is routes if you really want to go down it you know um, I myself went to the traditional route I actually just learned myself I didn't do much study on it just trial and error so I found myself here with that you know you just have a talent for it natural well, talent just a passion really that that helps a lot you know brilliant and um, where are all these pieces from the symposium going to end up when the symposium finishes well uh, next week now we will start moving them up to the old library um, and having them on exhibition just to show people what was done within the week so from there it's they're on anybody's course and if anyone is interested in them they're welcome to make an offer and um, if not the artist will take them home and um, yeah, so we'll see how that runs next week and okay. when the exhibition gets going. So they're all up for sale really, are they? Really, yeah. If somebody has an interest, they, they will be there for an offer, yeah. Okay, and I'm just noticing here today, it's it's quite dusty. Does the dust ever bother you? <laughs> no, well, you need you need the proper safety equipment all, at all times, I suppose, because uh, even sandstones, the dust can be quite dangerous. Uh, so you need to spend the money on the safety wear, definitely, you know, it's, it is quite dangerous. So. You need to look after it, number one, of course, you know. Alright, okay, Mark, we leave it there and best of luck to you. Best of luck to you in the display. Thank you very <laughs> much. Alright. Okay, so this is Alison Bowl and another local sculptor. Uh, Alison, you're from Smithborough, is it? That's right, but between Smithborough and Scottstown. Okay, and you're here at the Film Symposium, obviously. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about how you got involved in sculpting. Um, I went back to um, college as a mature student when I reached 40 and um, went to college to fast and did a degree in fine art and ended up in the sculpture department uh, and ended up, the first, the first year I was there they brought down a sculpture from Kildare and done it with all her Kilkenny limestone and all her tools and things like that and that was me just hooked, hooked on stone, you know, I just, I love stone, you know, I just love the, you know, the sort of the history of stone, the feel of stone, the smell of stone, and things like that. I just love it. Okay, and do you, do you work with any other kind of mediums or...? I've done a bit in plaster, I would have, you know, um, plaster looking at processes and things like that. Um, and I've also done, I've been working a little bit with bronze, getting the casting stuff in bronze, because there's a limit, you know, to what you can do in stone. Some things just don't translate into stone, so I think you need to be able to to include the other mediums into, okay, into your work. So what are you working on here? Tell us a little bit about it. This is um, this is Frank Cave, Francie Brady. Um, Pat McCabe uh, wrote The Butcher Boy, which is based in France. Yes. And yeah. um, the stage version of The Butcher Boy is called Frank Cave Says Hello. So this is Frank Cave Says Frank. Hello. <laughs> in all his glory. <laughs> in all his glory. <laughs> okay. So. What kind of um, pieces have you on display up in the, is the museum there? Oh, there's, there's the, in, the, in the market house. In the market house, yes. okay. Um, I have two, two, two pieces there. One is a small Kilkenny limestone piece, which is sort of about this size on a, on a, uh, a Pepsin, is it? On a metal rod oh, okay. raised up. Um, and then the other piece is a, lar is a larger white marble piece. Um, both of them are, are kind of abstract pieces, which is, is, is the way I usually work. Um, is looking at abstract, uh, looking at, at natural form, and then kind of abstracting it in a sense. Um, so this for me is is, is unusual. Is unusual. <laughs> yes, I don't do figurative work. Okay. Um, so in that regard, it's been it's been a challenge. Um, how did you get involved in the symposium? Um, Mark, Mark Langley <laughs> got you involved and asked, and, um, and I was just you know absolutely delighted to be asked and, and delighted to be able to be involved. Yeah, it's just been a super, super experience. Okay, and you are hoping um, to sell the pieces at the end of the week. Is that how it goes? Or of whatever yeah, happens? Whatever happens, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, but well, I hope you're enjoying the weather and working outside. It's just been, it's been fantastic. I mean, for, for working, probably it's been too hot. But, um, you know, as far as regards the public coming in and seeing what we're doing and so on, it's, it's really been great for them. It's definitely been a good week for them. This is Brona Tumulty reporting for Border Region Television at the Stone Symposium in Clonus.